Filling a wiki full of information is a daunting task, but you might be wondering where we get all that information from. A large part of that, especially for Fallout 76, is in data mining. But what exactly is data mining? I'm joined in this series by Waffle Cop, who is one of our data miners. Waffle, it's great for you to be with us. Yeah, no problem. It's nice to be here. Great. So when I took a break from the community a few years ago, data mining wasn't really a high profile thing. So can you tell us exactly what it is? So at the top level, data mining is just analyzing the information that is stored in the game's files. How you go about it is really based on the end goal or what type of files you're dealing with. But all of the data is there in the files for the game, and it's just a matter of obtaining and formatting it in a nice, pretty way. So it sounds like something that's clearly very important for those of us who are building wikis. What's one of the more impressive finds that you've been involved in? Back when the Nuka-Cola Quantum Power Armor had come out, we knew that there was secrets in, um, it's the bunkers, and I don't remember the name of the bunkers, but there was secrets regarding them, but we didn't really know what they were. And so I was able to use data mining to figure out the secret and solve the puzzle for that Quantum Power Armor. I was not actually the first one to do it. There was a guy on Reddit who he had commented saying that he figured it out, but he didn't give any other information than that. Like he had a picture that he had found it and that was it. So I was the second person. I spent all night making a video to get it out there, which a lot of people didn't like, actually. They were like, you ruined it. We're supposed to figure this out with, you know, like actually figure it out. But instead, I just looked up the locations of things using data mining. Oh, at the end of the day, you can either choose to read those sort of things or you can choose to go and explore the the thing yourself. No one's forcing you to actually read the walkthrough, I guess. Yeah, I started putting spoilers for stuff with like that kind of stuff afterwards. But the prior to that, I had not been. So I, it's understandable a little bit. Fair enough. So I want to talk about some of the tools that you use. We'll talk about them sort of in broad detail this time, and we'll, we'll explore them a bit more in the future. But when I go looking in our Discord, I see links into something called NukaCrypt, and I also hear them talking about something called XEdit. What do these do, and what can we learn from them? So I'm going to start by breaking down the target of those tools, because they both are looking at the same files, the, the same information. So that file is called the ESM file, and it follows a basic format. Uh, it has groups. And it just, a group is a record type that stores a list of other groups uh, or records, but never both at the same time. So it'll either be a group of groups or a group of records. It's never going to be both. And then you have a record, which is just an individual data structure that has fields that will store information relevant to the record. It's like a weapon will have a damage field or a level field, that kind of stuff. It's not going to be irrelevant to the type of record. Currently, I believe there's about 170 different record types, ranging from weapons to quest text to dialogue, just all the data in the game. There's 170 of them. Xedit is a tool that will display that data in a human readable way because if you just open it up you're not going to be able to parse any relevant information out of that so xedit will just let us see that in a way that we can understand and it also allows us to run scripts to export that data which is super useful nukacrypt is basically xedit light it's just a search and display for records it doesn't have anything super fancy you can't run scripts and it's entirely reliant on xedit anyway it's just a quicker way to access it so you don't have to load up a whole program on your PC, go and find stuff. It's just all there in a web browser. What about the various media, like the images and models and things like that? How do you access those? So those are stored in a separate file, and it's basically just a, a file archive that was designed by Bethesda, kind of similar to a zip file or a tar archive. And there are a couple tools out there that you can use to search or extract files from the BA2 archives. I personally use Bethesda Archive Extractor because it's got a command line interface as well as a graphical interface. These archives store all of the game's data that is not just a data structure. So that is textures, audio, images, models, like I said, anything that's not just raw data structures. Depending on what files you're dealing with, you're going to need different tools. For images and textures, they use a file called a .dds file. And we've found that paint.net is probably the best one for that because it's just plug and play. You install paint.net, you can open those files. There's two other tools, you can use GIMP or Photoshop, but those both require an add-on to be installed to open the .dds files. So a little bit more work there, but in my opinion, I like GIMP because it has all the features of Photoshop, but it's free and open source. If you want to open 3D models, there's a tool that was written and it's called NIFScope. Currently, it's not actually written to be used with Fallout 76. However, Xera updated that so that it does work with Fallout 76. You just have to download a very specific branch from GitHub because otherwise it won't work. And that lets us view all the 
of 3D models, as well as you can actually retexture them. You, you can't save it back to the game, but you can preview it. So you can say, oh, I want to view this object with this texture, and it'll at the very least let you see it. Audio files, there's a couple different formats. Most of them are standard, but there's one non-standard one called a .fuzz format, and I believe that's used for a lot of the dialogue in the game. So conversations from NPCs, that kind of stuff. There's a program called Unfuzzer, which will just convert that to a standard format that you can use in any other program. So I've heard with the animations that they're using Flash, but I remember there being a big deal about Flash being removed from websites. What what are these games using Flash for, and is it safe? So you are correct. Flash is being used for the animations, a lot of the small stuff on the UI, as far as like when your player gets crippled or a perk animation pops up. Those are all Flash files. I, I'm pretty sure at this point that it's going to be secure. The reason Flash was insecure in the web browser was because you were downloading Flash files from whatever website. And there was a lot of websites that would be malicious, like they would use Flash in a mal malicious way. They would try and patch the security holes, but Flash was an ancient technology. You know, it's like like Internet Explorer. There's only so many band-aids you can apply before it's just not worth maintaining anymore. And so they made that decision to just cut it. So at this point, Flash is packaged with the game, and I believe it's a limited version of Flash, so it's not got that web accessibility or anything like that. And it's only loading Flash files that are provided locally by Bethesda. You're in a pretty safe spot there. And then to actually open those files, you want to use JPEX's Flash Decompiler, which will allow you to open, view, and export all of those animations, because there's no other really standard tool for Flash, that, unless you want to pay for it, and Flash licensing is a nightmare. So this is the free version. Thanks for joining us for this Tech Talk there, Waffle Cop. Hopefully we'll have you on again so we can talk more about these tools in a bit more detail. Yeah, no problem.